And okay, so for this week, and actually this will be the kind of the last lecture before the next individual work. So we will spend most of the time talking about the next coursework. And but before that, um, I want to say a little bit about the examples in some things action we were talking about and using the Vigo light last week. And so this is the one of the validations and we tried and most of it actually worked fine. And the part which actually didn't quite work and is this part, for example, this one when we say type multi, in the sense when we were expecting we'll be able to select the multiple points and in the validation, and but that's actually not the case. We can only still and select the one. And the other part still works, just this part, and and type multi doesn't work. And so what happened is actually there were some new changes um, in the latest version of the Vega Lite. And so currently, and um, we are using version four, but the lecture slides was and based on the earlier versions, version three, or maybe even versions two. Okay, and then that means the examples which we were based on version three syntax no longer works. Okay, and so what happened is in version four, and they introduced a kind of new type in Vega Lite and called parameters. Okay, so um, so this is and uh, not just say a parameter as in a function parameter and something similar, but it's just completely new type. Okay, and so we didn't have, we will not have time to cover this new format because that means we, this will actually change all the things in terms of how the inter interaction is done. And we don't have time to cover that. This is like the last lecture before the coursework. Okay, and so as a result, um, we were, you're not, not required to use these actions and that no longer works. So for example, the one we showed in the previous slides didn't work. And, but you can still use the ones which works. There's a few simple ones which still work, for example, and you can select a point, that's fine. And you can mouse over the point to select, and that's also fine. And so basically for the coursework, and just use the one which still works. If it doesn't work, that's okay. You don't need to use it. Okay. And now I'm gonna spend a little bit of time and to talk about uh, the coursework to the individual work. And so this is actually due, will be due in two weeks time. So, and next week is the break. So this will be due the week after the break. Okay, and that account, accounts for 20% of the total module mark. And that will be due at five, five o'clock on the Friday of week 12. And so that will be the week, sorry, the um, 16th of the April. So I can show you, if you show the uh, these away. I'm not sure if you could see this. And so we currently um, is on the 29th. Uh, the coursework is due on the, ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, of course. And 16th, which is here. And so this is the week or or let's say this week. And then the next week, which is starting from the fifth and is a break for the Easter. So that week we, there's no lectures or labs for all the modules as a break. And then the coursework will be due the week after the break. So that'll be the week starting the 12th. The actual due date will be on the 16th of the April. Okay, as I explained, there's a one week Easter break before 
between now and the week that the coursework is due. Under the marking scheme and the data set on, on the submission page, and uh, obviously I'll go through that now today in the lecture. And so in terms of the data set, and we'll be using the one and that comes from something called Vars Challenge 2008 and Mini Challenge 2. And so that's the link. If you click, it goes to and the module page, sorry, the, the page describing the mini challenge. Okay, and first, just a little bit of background about the VAS challenge itself. And it's an annual international visual analytics competition. And then it provides a data set and then analysis questions. And then people enter the competition by providing entries you need to present the visual analytics tools they developed and the answers they found using their tools. So it's not just they're finding the answers, they want you to present your new tools as well, which is an important part of the challenge. Okay, and so this runs every year. So it runs, and say last year, this year as well, I think. And then there's many, uh, the entries from different companies which makes reality softwares and also research groups and people doing research in data validation or visual analytics. And usually each year and uh, the challenge is break into a few mini challenges and sometimes you can combine these into a grand challenge, but not always the case. So this is the second mini challenge from year 2018, which is three years from now on. Okay, and so every time, and just as before, and the data set would have some background information. And obviously, and all the paper and the people, the place, or the and companies are made up. And so for this particular one, and it's set in the background in the place called Mr. Ford, the city, and next to it, and is a wildlife reserve or national park or something similar called the Bongsong Lakao and Wildlife Preserve. Preserve. And then the city also has a small industrial area with four manufacturing endeavors. So there's four factories. They are light manufacturing factories. Okay, and then what happened at Miss Ford and Wildlife Preserve is they're struggling with possible endangerment of uh, local birds called rose crested blue pipit. So what they found is and the number of the nesting pairs seem to decreasing alarmingly. So essentially that means the population of this type of birds reduced a lot. Okay, and then, so the year before that, which was in 2017, and there's already a vast challenge on the similar background. So if you analyze or from the data provided the year before, it's indicated that one of the factories called Cassio's office and furniture, and maybe linked to the decreasing in the bird population, so that's just to say, potentially that's not firm evidence. And the company now insists that they have done nothing wrong. And then, so for 2008, and it's time for more investigation using visual analytics. So the goal is to identify and what are the links, say if we can link that back to the factory. And okay, and so what you will be given in the data set, they are mainly the several years of water sensor readings from the rivers and streams in the preserve. So that as you can see on this side, so this is the second part of the data set, which is a map, and it's give you some locations where these sensors are placed and it's a bit small, and but we'll see a little bit more later on in the actual data set. And each of these sites has different names. 
So this one called uh, Bunsri, and this one's called Achara, et cetera, et cetera. So each arrow means one side. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten sides. And then at each side, you have sensors that should measure different and readings from the water and from simple ones from water temperature to say the amount of different chemicals. Okay, as we said, and these readings were taken from different locations and throughout the area. So that's the map of the entire preserve or the wildlife uh, and area. And these are different locations of the sensor placed. They're always and placed in, um, sorry, inside the river, which is a blue thing or the stream. Okay, and then it contains the measurement of several chemicals, actually more than a few. And we will see a list later on, actually quite a few. Okay, and in terms of task is to investigate the sensor readings to find possible links and to bird population deduction. So to see if we can analyze the sensor data to find if there's any potential links that may cause and the birds population re reduction. <clears throat> okay, and then this is a bit more and in terms of the example of the data set. So as we said, the first part of the data set is the map itself and which you saw on the right. And the second part of the data set, which is the main part, um, is the sensor data. And so this is what it looks like. And it has these columns in the data and the ID of the reading, the value, so what an actual reading is, and the location, which indicates and which site it's from. So we have these 10 different sites on the map and sample, okay, I think this one does, okay. Sorry, it's not a sample, it's a sample date as one attribute. So that's when the reading was collected. And finally the measure says what has been measured. So if you look at these one, it says, um, the ID of this reading is 2022, sorry, 2,221, and its value is two. It's measured at this site and Boon three, and it's a bit hard to see probably from your side, but it's this one, kind of northmost sensors in the park or in the preserve, and it was taken on the 11th of January, 98, and it's measured is the water temperature. So at that time, in the 11th of January, the water temperature there and is two degrees, assume. And then the next line is another reading. And this time, and the value is 9.1, same site, same date. And this time is it's measured is the dissolved oxygen level in the water. Okay, and then there's other things, they're all measured at the same place, the same time. This is ammonium and nitrotides, nitrates, etc., etc., and phosphorus, sodiums, and potassium. Okay. Okay, and then so in terms of the data set, and you don't need to only introducing any new data set, just as all the other previous exercise, and just use these two, and the map itself, and the sensor readings, just use these two. So, professor, go, yeah? Uh, professor, in the data set uh, that you just introduced to us, uh, over there, what is the, exactly is the value? Like, is it uh, temperature? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so the, I think it's about the unit, really about the unit, and and most of them actually is some some chemical, and the levels will be say milliliter per a milliliter per liter in the water. And we're gonna, I think there is a file there, and in the data says we explain what's the unit for these, 
and the, the temperature wise well i think it was celsius so thank you we'll, yeah we're going to come to that and in a second yeah come back to this and so you don't need to use any other data set for example and you don't need to use the data set from the vast challenge year before even that's relevant you don't require any data there and uh, you don't need to understand or explain the information say and what are these different chemicals are and which ones uh, are toxic to wildlife again that's not important and you just as you can assume say okay if and this chemical the levels increase a lot that might be a reason <clears throat> okay and again just answer the questions with only the information provided and in the vast challenge or in the data set that's all you need okay Professor, just a quick question uh, yeah. is this data set already pre-processed do we need to do any processing on a data set and um, so the data set itself is in the format you can use and but it certainly has some issues actually that's part of the analysis question and again as usual you can do additional analysis if you want to but you can visualize it as it is now Okay, and I'm going to talk a little about and self. And so there are three questions. And the first one and is to describe any trends, uh, anomalies, and with respect to and the chemical concentration. So the, there's actually two parts. The first one is trends, and the second one is anomalies and trends in terms of the changes over time and or over the different site. For example, you can say, I want to just look at the water temperature, how that changes over time. But you can also compare as water temperature across different sites. So, okay, maybe one site always have higher or lower temperatures than the others. So that's the trend. And the second part is about anomaly, and which is the sudden change over time for example maybe for one month so the temperature is much higher than the average or maybe one site has significantly higher temperature than the others maybe twice as high or three times as higher so those are normally okay and so then for the first analysis question is just to find the trends and anomalies in the data yeah and then the second part actually would be related to and pre-processing is actually to describe any data quality or uncertainty issues so just as any data and the data itself is not perfect and it will have some errors or issues in the data itself and how to visualize using visualization to find this and data quality issues is part of the analysis task okay and so potential issues that will be counted under this question will be saying missing data and that's very obvious for for example and maybe for one side there's missing water temperature readings for a period maybe for example because the sensor and went wrong or out of order so no longer working so then missing some data okay and this is maybe a bit more subtle is say for example changing in the collection frequency and so maybe um, a site used to collect water temperature once every hour but for maybe for a period that becomes once every day okay so that means a changing in the collection frequency and that's also a data quality issues and it's less obvious than this one and finally and you might have potentially unrealistic values. And for example, and you can't have water temperature higher than 100 degrees and Celsius, or realistically, you're probably not gonna have water temperature higher than 50 degrees. That's just not really unrealistic. But for example, if the sensor doesn't work properly, it might give you the readings, which are higher say, than 50 degrees. Again, that's a potential and um, errors, even though it's not missing data or changing frequency. And towards, say, an algorithm or sensor, 
it's difficult to know that's 50 degrees unrealistic but we as human because the background we know is a temperature water temperature is unlikely this kind of normal range of the values okay and these three are just examples and there might be other possible and errors or data quality issues and in the data set okay and then it's up to for up for you to find so these are just examples they not cover all the possible types of data quality issues in the data set okay and the last question is and describe any particular concern that may be linked to the wildlife and so previously for these two in terms of the trends and anomalies trends and anomalies and in terms of data quality issues they not necessarily have to be linked to wildlife um, and this one it just says anything that you think might be linked to the wildlife and population again as we mentioned before and you don't need to use any external information and just use the information in the data set. For example, you might say the chemical levels of certain compounds and increase the, quite a lot over the years. That might be a result or something related to the reduction of the bird population. And, but for example, there's other things maybe uh, the values of one chemical and spiked within a short period, for example, and the amount of, say, adonemium and increased a lot within one month at one of the sites. And then that one maybe is less likely to be related to the overall reduction in bird population. It might, might have some one-off effect, say for that month, it might affect the bird's population quite a bit, but it might not as a result of long-term consistent and deduction of bird population okay and just want to repeat and say these ones again don't use any additional data it might be tempting and but and don't just and use the things that you can think of um from the potentially you can link to the bird population will be fine Okay, and so that's the analysis question. And the next part is actually about the validation. And as you probably expected, you would have to use Vega Lite and to create a validation. So you're not allowed to use Tableau or other validation libraries, at least not in the submission. And for example, if you want to use Tableau to explore the data, just to see what might be there to help you to, before you're actually writing the code to create the validations in Vega light that's okay but for the submission the violation has to be created using Vega light and uh, you can apply and any pre-processing or, or any non-visual analysis to help you to answer the questions again so this is similar as before if you want to reformat the data or maybe calculating some additional values like average or variance etc and you can Professor, and you can actually do this in using JavaScript or not. Yeah, sorry. Uh, professor, uh, sorry to interrupt. Can we also use uh, Python for this part? Uh, yes, yes. And it doesn't matter. So which language or software you use and in terms of pre-processing or non-visual analysis. Um, so yeah, I gave some examples here. It says you can do this in Excel R or Jupyter. Assume, say, if you're using Python, you probably can do that in Jupyter. Or write your own code and most of these analysis you can be done in javascript as well but these are the non-visual analysis we didn't quite cover you might need and for calculated say average or say variance the simple measures you can done using just javascript if you want to calculate more complex ones you might need to use some javascript libraries uh, regarding this, uh, a quick question: Would you, if there's null values, there's none values, do you want them to be? Um, can they be replaced with mean, or can they be removed? Do you want? Okay, that's completely up to you. Because and uh, in this exercise and uh, dealing with quality issues is part of the an uh, analysis task. So, I think for 
to answer this one, the second question, you need to show the these missing values in the visualization, for example. Don't just replace them or remove them. Otherwise, then in that case, you will not be able to see where, say, the missing data is because that is part of the analysis question. So you don't want to just say replace some values or remove them. So there will be a before and after. Uh, what do you mean? So there will be um, uh, like a graph, for example, before uh, so, uh, when the missing data is, then after pro processing it. Um, I don't think after will be necessary. Just use the, the one which shows the data as it is, then you can see, for example, where the missing data is, or maybe any other data quality issues. That's part of the analysis task. And the, your analysis, for example, other things in terms of trends or anomalies, will base the data as it is, for example, with missing values. So for the part which you don't have the data, you just say, well, I don't have the data. I cannot describe any trends or anomalies that were relevant to that part of data. But there's still plenty more <clears throat> data to allow you to show the trends and anomalies. And professor, that, does, uh, yeah? professor, the second question we have to uh, answer using Vegalite or we can use any other language as such? And for this question, um, yes, yes, you see how to use VegaLine. So this is, has to be visually. So you have to show, visualize the data, then somehow the visualization data. So the violation will show the missing data or changing the collection frequency or some other data quality issues. These have to be done visually. I mean, missing data is probably easy because if you say, you visualize the temperature of a site over the years, and you will see a gap if there's some missing data. And that's all it is. <clears throat> OK. Um, I think I covered this part. <clears throat> Oh, okay. And for this part, I'm going to do a quick value, a quick demonstration, and just in terms of help you to getting started. So how might you mount it? You might do this and in Visual Studio Code. Um, so uh, or look, have a look at the code first and before actually I'll to recreate that in the Visual Studio Code. And as what I mentioned before, um, maybe not them. So you still need to uh, answer some questions and uh, the foundation and the, say the discussion text will be in the same document this time, which is HTML document, which as we said before, you can have an headings and this is the part and um, which is the actual validation itself. And then you can have discussions for example and the different headings and paragraphs for those and in the actual violations you need to define a different devs where the violation will be shown and here the ids you might give it different names depends on which questions or which point of this question so this one says this will be the violations for the first question for the first questions, I may have more than one validations. So this will be the first one. And this will be the actual, the Vega Live specification itself. And you will need to load the data. In this case, we probably just put the data inside the same folder as HTML. So it will just load like this. And then you define your mark and the encoding. And the only part that will be new and is here is the transform. And so this is something allows you to filtering data in terms, okay, here, I'm using two filters. I'm trying to reduce down and the amount of data that's gonna be displayed in my validation. And for the first one, I want to do the filter based on the location. 
I'm only selecting the site, which is its name is called Boonstray. So that means I'm only showing the values from one site. And the second one, I'm filtering on the measures. In this case, I'm only showing the water temperature because for each site, you have many different chemicals you can see and you can, that's being measured. In this case, I only want to what a measure, sorry, showing the attribute, which is called water temperature. And then as a result, this is a graph, but it's only showing the water temperature at a site called Bunsuri. Okay. So in the actual data set, it's including the readings from all the locations and all the measures. And this allows you to say, just showing say one location at one measure. And you can do similar filtering and filtering at, out at different time period as well. The syntax will be the same. You say filter the field <clears throat> will be the name of the measure, which will be called the sample date. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it will not be equal. It will be, be a range to say uh, what's the time period. And uh, again, for the details, and please refer to the and please refer to the uh, Vega Light document, which has a bit more details. Okay. And for now, I'll just show you quickly. So let me go to uh, um. okay, and first and so you can see in this folder and I have the readings file, which is a data set which is provided and with the, for the coursework and it's available on the module page. So if you go to module page, So waiting for it to load. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try it the other way then. Oh, doesn't work. Oh, okay. Um, okay, sorry, and this is the wrong module. And so if you're going to um, coursework to bigger lights, and you would see these two files. And the first files is description of the coursework itself. And which is the same thing we just went through in the lecture slides, but this is in the PDF format. And the second file and is the data set. And uh, if you download that file, which, which I already did, you would get and these two are these three files? I'm not sure if you can see. And so the first one is the map, and which is just the one we saw in the lecture slide, which shows you the locations and names of different sites with the measure or with the reading being collected. And there is a second document and which explains and what are the different uh, readings means, or diff basically different columns means, means what are the ID, value, location, sample date, and the measurements. And so this is the same. We'll again went through that in the lecture. 
uh, it didn't have the unit number. Okay, and so this is the actual data set. Again, we saw a small examples and in the lecture slides. So you had the IDs, the values, the location, the sample date, and what it is measuring. And usually for most of these, and the measurement is like milliliter per, per liter. And there used to be a separate file, which just give you the list of the units and for the, all the chemicals, and, but I didn't include it here. But again, you don't really need that for any of these questions. For the questions, all, you only need to say, if the, what are the changing, what are the trend of the change, or is there any anomalies or missing data? And again, in terms relevant to the and bird life, we don't need to know what exactly the unit is either. Okay, so these are the three files. And in the Vega lines, I'm only including the readings.csv, the CSV file. Okay, and so I already created the single file here. And I'm going to just do a new one and just to demonstrate. So I'm going to call this demo html so that should be the document including both your the validation and the discussion okay. call this okay. can't be any smaller so for this course work to And the first thing you will need um, is to load the required VegaLite script files, which are these three here. I'm not going to type, can't remember those, I'm going to just copy paste here. And you can see we are using the latest version, which is the version four here. And this is and part of the reason causing the errors or the issues we had with the VegaLite interactions. Like the selections multiples and but so look professor at can we use a uh, another version like if we want to use version three is it possible or should we use only version four itself um i would recommend using version four and if you really want to use say the let's say different interaction i would recommend you have a look over the documentation and but if for example if we really want to use the visualization in the way we covered in the lecture, you can try using version three or even version two. But my recommendation would be stick with version four because that's probably the more useful one. And if you later on do want to use Vega Lite in your other work, for example, you want to do your final project, you want to use Vega Lite, most likely you're gonna be using the latest version. And in that sense, the latest, how they do the interaction in the latest version will be most relevant. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Yeah. And um, okay, and then we come back to the actual um, body itself. So um, you probably, as we said, and this will include both the text and the validation. And um, so you can say, write something on the page so you know what I'm. Um, uh, what the visualization is about. And so, uh, and there's also a common question people ask, say, for example, if they can't fit all the questions in one page, it becomes too long, or they prefer to have sub multiple and HTML files, and that's completely fine. So you can have one HTML file for each question. That's completely okay. And um, so let's say this is my first question. I will just copy over the actual question itself. Okay, let's say I'm gonna do, okay, maybe I'll call this H2. And then this is my first validation. Okay, I'll call this H3 maybe. And this is the trend. Okay. And then obviously, and I can go into the browser now. And so far, it's 
not no validation yet, but it would have say my top level sections and first level ones, and then the second level and third level titles of my page. And then I go to the actual div part. And for example, my call this validation question one, a, and so that's the new ID. It doesn't really matter. It's just something you can refer to in your VS Vega light code and just use some convention, which makes sense. <clears throat> what I meant here, so this will be the violation for question one. That's the first violation for question one. And because you can have multiple trends or anomalies, so I would say you would have at least one trend and one anomaly. So you'd have multiple violations for this question, at least. Okay, and then it goes to the script part. And you can cause we are spec. Oh, I have to give it a name. And then I we'll need to go Vega in bed. And this will be VL spec. And then the question one a. Let me see if that's the right way to do it. Oh, so you do the ID first. Okay, so this is like a set up the basic things for the Vega light. Now you actually set the actual and specification. And so first you need the data. In this case, we're gonna using a URL. And the file name will just be called readings.csv. As I see, that has to be this one. And uh, let me see what I was saying in the lecture slides. Um, okay, so data will be the reading. We're gonna using the type, say is a line. So this part you definitely will know. Okay, we'll add a little bit things, say tooltip equal to true. That means when you mouse over, it should display something. And the values of where your mouse pointed is. So a mark. Uh, uh, okay. So what we covered so far is we just say mark line. That would work, but in this case, we need a bit more. So it has type line. And then to uh, Yeah, okay. And then we do the encoding and this part, and we all know already just says, to decide what is x and y axis is. <clears throat> so this goes to the um, encoding part and we would have the x. Um, it will be uh, now field would be called sample date. And if you look at the validation, Okay, and it's called the sample date. The, the type is temporal. I will just try to say big T, see if it works. I think that's something we tried before, seemed to work. And we have another X, sorry, the Y attributes. And in this case, and the field will be the readings itself, will be the value. So that's what the value is. Oh. will be value. And then the type will be quantitative. Let's say if the capital Q works. Okay, and then, so this is the new part. 
and also is the how use this to filter the data. I mean, you could if we don't filter or display everything, and which does not make too much sense. And here, and ah, so the, one of the potential things you can do, for example, you can create a matrix. For example, you can using the repeat and create a matrix of these different plots. Maybe let's say the x axis will be different sides, and you have ten sides, and then the y axis will be different chemicals. Then you can change, and each time so you can choose and water temperature, or maybe some other measurements, oxygen or other chemicals. And then in the sides, every time you equal, I can change this one, and using the repeat. But we probably don't have time to demonstrate that in the in the lecture we're going to st stick with the normal transform actually hope that still works so, okay and so one thing to pay attention to here that you can have multiple criteria for transformation filter is one of them and these are using the square bracket means they are an array and it's different from this one which means that's a JSON object. And so we can do and filtering on the location and make the name equal to bong three. So we're going to do filter. Oh. And these things itself has to be a JSON object. Uh, the filter on the field is forgot now. Uh, location and the condition will be equal to born three. That's my first. By a second filter, this one the field will be measure, I think, and it will equal water temperature. I just double check if there's a capital. Yes, it is a capital W water temperature. Okay, and that should be it. And so, sir, line thirty-five. Uh, there's a spelling mistake. It should be F I L T E R. Oh yes, yes. Filter. Okay, yeah, very good. Good, yeah. Probably still there's more errors, and we will see. And when we run this in the browser, and but here we define a very simple validation. Uh, it's linked to this particular div. And that's the ID called Q1A. That's why you have hashtag, which stands for ID, Q1A here. VSPAC is what we said here, VSPAC. And we set the data, set the mark, and set encoding. These are all fairly straightforward. This is a line chart because we said the mark will be line. And we said the X axis will be the sample data, and the Y axis will be value. And we filter out and based on the location and the measure, so we pick only the one from the bone, bone three and showing the water temperature. And these values you can easily change to create other charts. Okay, and let's go to the actual visualization. Yeah, so not showing something yet. Let me make sure I saved it here already. Yes, I did. Let's demo again. So your tools is using the and uh, the developer tools and just right click, choose inspect. And in this case, it has one errors. Okay, I'll just go to console. Ah, so invalid type T. So there's it does not recognize T. So you can see um. That tells you invalid type T, and which I did 
here I was being a bit lazy so maybe I still have to see temporal okay invert tab Q ah I sure we used that before quantitative okay yeah so now we have our visualization. Um, so actually now you can see if I mouse over, it displays sample date and the value. So, and this is what uh, this part is for. Tooltip equal to true allows it to. And so I think the filtering also works. So you're only showing the values from one side and showing as the water temperature. And obviously uh, you can change these and the access, for example, can change value to water temperature and the change, and this one, for example, sample date to say, for example, the site or use the site as a title. <clears throat> and that's about it. So this is probably one of the simplest one and, but you can certainly do other things. Yeah. And you can have, what you could do is inside the body, and you may have a second div, and this time maybe you call it question 1b. So that's your second visualization. You can have a script, and which you write some code to create a second visualization. And then you have your discussion. And this is where you actually can answer the questions you required to discuss, for example, and why they're effective, et cetera, et cetera. Or even say just a description, for example, and what the finding is. Let's just call this finding. And you can see, okay, obviously the second version we haven't created it yet, so we can't see anything here, but we can say finding and we can write some text to say what the finding is. can see from the visualization that the water temperature, write everything, but you can write here. And if you don't like the font or size or how that aligns, these are things you can do with CSS, but any formatting would not affect your mark. So you don't have to worry about CSS. You can change, say, the font or the color or the alignment, but that should not affect your mark. In terms of answer, this is completely fine. <clears throat> okay. So I'll expect you to... So the, the main thing to remember is the report and the validations should be in the same HTML file. That's the most important thing to remember. Okay, and now back to the actual slides itself. <clears throat> okay, and uh, so should be at least one vehicle light validation for each analysis questions. So we had three mentioned here. So for each of these should it be have at least one, and but you probably have more than one. For example, and for the first questions, you might have one validations for the trend, another one for anomaly. And you can maybe have more than one trend or more than one anomaly, and each of these would require one violation. And you can have a dashboard, that's also okay. It counts as more than one violation. This, as we said before, for questions one, and you could have more than one anomaly or one trend or one anomaly. And similarly, for the second question, which is about data quality issues, you might find more than one. It's actually quite a few. And for each one, you probably need a validation, unless you can show all of them in a single validation. Okay, and so you need to describe and what the finding is, and just as we, as I was trying to do here, and just to make sure you actually write down what the finding is. So you had the picture, and you write down what the finding is underneath it. And then make it clear how, how we can see the findings from the validation. And then 
next one will be the how to validation design support analysis. So why this oh, why this is the best of validations to show what you want to show in terms of findings. Okay, and in terms of creating the validations and if you use any advanced things and you can talk about and so maybe oh sorry uh, keep switching between so for example for this one maybe i can say okay i use the tool tip so that's something you might want to describe here so the weather mark i can check if the tool tip is working and um, to see if it's actually relevant or useful for the question and you can do other things like a chart concatenation so multiple charts put together or any interactions so just describe these I mean, chart concatenation will be quite easy to see but the interactions if you didn't mention i might miss it because i will not be aware it's there okay and also any additional analysis you did and for this examples i have here and there's no additional analysis i just use the straightforward the values from the data set and but for example you might calculate you might display the and um, water temperature for this site but you overlay another one which is say the average water temperature then you can say how do you calculate the additional average water temperature use what package and what the calculation is okay so in terms of marking scheme and so the quality of the finding is how insightful what the finding is so that's six percent uh so that's for all three questions so that's not for individual ones so all three questions is six percent in terms of how clear and the finding how do you describe the finding is and how insightful <clears throat> like i say for example and you can say and um, based on this i can see there is a pattern of the water temperature which is going up and down every year so in the summer it goes up and in the winter it goes down and certain these patterns and repeats every year okay and that will be a correct findings so you get definitely get some mark and uh, not particularly insightful that's kind of expected and not something a little bit surprising or different than people would think otherwise. Oh, okay. And also, if you can say break down into both time and location, then you might give you more interesting findings. So you might um, again here, and you might compare the patterns or the trends over time and at multiple places. And you might be able to say something a bit more and about the trend rather than just say this is the values for one places. Okay. And also make sure it's something you can easily see in the validation, in the sense you the validation designed in a certain way to make it easier to detect these findings or the patterns. Okay, and then the next part is about the discussion just to say um, why the validations is designed this way to show the findings or make it easier to see the findings. So you need to say how the, why this line chart, for example, in the example is the best for this type of analysis and why the choice of the mark and channels is effective. And did you use, use any additional features, for example, and sorting or the filtering or interaction to help further improve the validation. Okay. And the last one is just in terms of the quality of the validation code. And uh, so to make sure you write your code properly, don't the code has don't have errors. And also it's formatted properly. That's the basic requirements. <clears throat> and of course, and if you use more advanced features and for example, multiple views, dashboard or interactions, and it will receive higher marks. And obviously if you use these correctly without errors, but it's even better if you can actually use these to actually help your validation 
in terms of message or findings that you want to discover, not just purely for the sake of adding. For example, um, in this example here, um, I added mouse over, and um, but it's not particularly useful. For example, if what I want to say for this relation, the finding is to show there's this regular patterns up and down every year, and it repeats over the years. To, and when I have this mouse over feature, it doesn't necessarily help with that finding. <clears throat> so in that sense, if something else might be more useful here in terms of depends on the finding and the mouse over interaction itself is not particularly useful in this case. Okay, and if you and use any additional analysis, so either pre-processing or calculations, single statistics, statistics or more complex ones and describe it here as well. And the more you do, again, if they help with the analysis and you get mark for this part. Are you, sir, sorry to say, are you expecting uh, annotates on the actual coding? Oh, okay. I assume you're talking about the comments in the Co code. Correct, yeah, comments. Yeah. So you could, and but I think the code itself and is probably easy enough. And I probably don't would not need any additional comments. I mean, you can add some for yourself. And that helps for me. I probably can understand quite easily what you're trying to do, because the code is not that complex. So I think what and the student was asking, for example, you can add some comments, yeah, and oh, and you can say this is the code for the first visualization in version uh, one for example, something like this. And this is not compulsory, you can add that, and it will make it easier to understand what the code below is for. But I mean, if you structure your, your document, something like this, it's quite straightforward to see, okay, this is part of the question one first uh, validation. So it's optional, it's not required. Okay, and now comes to the last part, it's about actual submission. So as we said, you should have HTML document, including both the validations and answers to the three questions. And so the validation itself and will be and something like this. And then you have you will discuss, for example, answer to these things or why the validation is effective or the first one, what the validation is, etc. Okay, so all these ones, will be in the same HTML document. So this is one, we had some text and visualizations and you could have all more than one visualizations. And if you want to create several doc, for example, three HTML documents, one for each questions, that's also fine. Okay. And you submit your actual zip file and including everything. And so HTML file, if you have any external JavaScript or CSS, you might not have, you might just including in your, uh, in the same HTML file. And if you use any external library, which needs local file and include that as well. And if you're not clear, just um, check with me. And finally, the data set files. So even the original one, just including there. And in this case, uh, the one I needed is this file, uh, which is this reading.csv. I think most of you would need this file. So include that in the submission as well. And it's not that big and once compressed, so it should not be a problem to include that. And this is useful, especially if you make some changes to the data set, and you definitely have to, because I will not be able to uh, get a copy of data to show the validations if you didn't, if you don't submit it. <clears throat> okay, yeah, it's just what I say here, and including the original data files. <clears throat> And especially if you make some changes, if you reformat data, for example, we definitely need to. Otherwise, I would not be able to see your violations 
on my computer and can't work that. Okay, and you're free to use any other like uh, so programming languages or tools or even APIs to do the analysis. And just to make sure you include the files if you need any additional local files. Okay. So I'll explain briefly. So for example, in what we did here, we used some external library files like these to, to use Vigalite. But these ones are not local files. These are the files which are stored online. So in, you just need to include in a URL and that will be completely fine. So you don't need to include any external files. But let's say for example, you did some analysis which required a file and um, which is called, I don't know, uh, mass.js. And so in this case, and this file, will be a local file because it's not online, it's not a URL. And I will need this file to be included in the submission. Otherwise, and when I try to run, it will not be able to find this file and whatever is used depend on this file would not run with it, just report errors. So if you have something like this and you need to include in your mass file. And similarly, uh, I think, Sometimes you might, and including a CSS file or something like this, and you need to include that CSS files in the submission as well. But again, most of the people, you don't have to worry about these if you're not using any external libraries or CSS, external CSS or JavaScript code, and you don't need to worry about this part. Okay, and that's it. And there's also uh, just a, a few last things. And so we're currently in week 11. And so in the lecture, we talked about coursework to individual work, which we, is what we just went through. And then this week in the lab, we're gonna do the coursework to group work demonstration, which we discussed in the lab last week, and you will demonstrate this week. Okay, and the next week, which will be week 12, and but uh, in the calendar, the next week is a break. And so you will have that week plus week 12. Week 12 itself, and again, that don't have any lectures or labs. And it's all just for your time for you to work on the individual work. And then email me for any questions. Okay. And then the, the deadline. Oh, okay. And then after the week coursework two deadline, so that will be the week 13. And we'll be starting the next half of the module. And then the, that will be covered by Xiao Hong and Lei Xi. And Xiao Hong will do the first six weeks, and Lei Xi will cover the last six weeks. So that's the plan. So you will, I think you will, will be needing using the a, a different URL, uh, Zoom link provided by Xiao Hong and from the week 13 onwards. Okay, and I'll just show you the calendar again, just to make sure. And so our currently, this is us here, and the week starting week, tw uh, starting the 29th of March. So this is week 11. And so in this week, and uh, we will do the demonstration of the group work that will be on the 1st of March, on Thursday. And today we cover or describe or discuss the individual work. And the week after, and which is uh, starting the 5th of April, and that is the week which is the Easter break. So there's no lectures or lab that week. So that does not count. And the coursework itself, the individual work is due the week after, which is week 12, the Friday of that. So that's the 16th of the April. That's when it's due. For that week, still we don't have any lectures or labs. It's just time for you to work on the coursework. And for any questions, and just email me. So after week, after that week, so for the week starting April the 19th, that will be the week 13. That's the week we're starting the second half of the module and will be covered by a different lecture. So on week 
uh, 13 or the week starting April 19th, that will be Xiao Hong and Professor Xia Hong Gao, and she will be covering the lecture, which is actually talking about image analysis. Um, you can also just check the module handbook, which give you a little bit more information about what are the other two topics will be covered in the second half of the module. And okay, and that's everything I plan to cover. Uh, any more questions regarding the coursework or submission or anything? No questions? Uh, professor, when we uh, try to pull data uh, in regular like code, the file usually does not yield any results. Uh, later on, we figured out that uh, the file had some issues. So is there any specific format in terms of CSV as well that we need to take care of? You said you have some issues when loading the data in Vigalite. That's right. So we had this file, uh, gap finder, which we are working for the current assignment, uh, current uh, coursework, group coursework. Oh, so okay. there was a difficulty. So uh, ultimately, uh, what I had to do was copy the entire data, paste it in, in another Excel, and then convert it to uh, CSV. Then it worked. It wasn't really working when we processed the data. So is there any specific format, any uh, CSV format that we need to take care of? Uh, okay. Um, so, so first, so this is not about individual work. So this is about the group work. So, so for everyone else that's listening. And so in saying you had some problems using the data set provided for the group work. That's right. Uh, professor, no, even, uh, professor, even uh, we faced the same problem. I mean, when we are doing the visualization using that data set, it was only displaying the X and Y axis and the visualization was not getting displayed. Okay. I wasn't aware. Uh, no, I mean, usually the VKLite should be able to take a CSV file directly or JSON file. They should support those. Uh, let's see. Professor, I believe there was a Unicode encoding over the CSV files. Sorry? Can you say there was a U Unicode uh, encoding over the CSV files, I believe. Uh, you mean the encoding issues of the file? Yeah, it, it's, it's probably an encoding issue only. Uh, okay, and uh, and if there's no other questions about uh, coursework too, I might just give it a quick try here just to see if I can find. But as I said, so what you did, I think one of you said you just uh, open this in Excel and then resave it as um, CSV and that worked. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just do this very quickly. Uh, so let me create a visualization. Ah, first I need to copy over the data set. Uh, demo. Uh, oh. Copy these. So I'm just give it a quick test here. And these are the script and the Uh, uh, I probably should have uh, spec two and uh, embed is spec. Uh, 
Uh, shouldn't it be hash f a uh, hash bis? Uh, yes, Being that's right. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, App. Uh, CSV. Uh, mark. Let's just do a line. Oh, can't be. Encoding, can't spell encoding. Uh, let me have a look at the data set. Okay, let's do x axis. Country type will be so C is capital, I guess, for the country. Thing. Okay, capital. and type is normal. Yeah. Why? Uh, what field can we use? Okay, maybe. Ah, no. We want a year and maybe life. That's gonna. Why is capital for year? Okay. Uh, it's always. Quantitative. Okay, yeah, life is small case. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, indeed, it doesn't. Uh, error. Uh, gap minder is not defined. Um, line 16 so it says me this one is not defined and online so the csv file you have to put it in the inverted commas i suppose oh ah, yeah let's see line is not defined of course um Error. I have to put this on here. Okay. I mean, for me, it seems to work. And obviously, this validation looks a little bit messy. I think it, uh, probably using font will be better. Yeah. I mean, it does not seem to be having any errors. Like it display the validation and not very nice because I think we're showing all the live values over all the countries. So it doesn't look very nice, but it seems to be working for me at least. And if you did have that problem, I would just say, just try to, as what someone suggested, you just open the file and resave in Excel and might solve the problem. It, well, it potentially also because the operating system. So I'm using a Mac, so yeah. it might just work. Maybe on the Windows, it's slightly different. Uh, and Windows is also working. Probably. Yeah. So that seems to be working. Um, okay. Um, just very quickly, is there any other questions? And um, okay.